This is a shot of Charlize Theron in Bombshell. Yes, that is actually Charlize Theron, who was nominated for an Oscar for her performance as former Fox News anchor Megyn Kelly. Put the two side by side, and it's extremely difficult to tell the difference. Viewers were certainly fooled. This transformation was a triumph in makeup and prostheses, especially when considering the fact that the film's prosthetic makeup designer, Kazuhiro, said that turning an actor into a real person can be the most difficult task a makeup artist faces, as the audience already has an image in their head of what that person should look like. So what made this especially difficult? And why was getting a cast of the inside of Charlize Theron's nose a key part of the process? Kazuhiro is no stranger to turning actors into real people. He won the Best Makeup Oscar for 2017's Darkest Hour, in which he made Gary Oldman look exactly like Winston Churchill. For Bombshell, he worked with makeup department head Vivian Baker and hairstylist Anne Morgan. The trio received an Oscar nomination for their work on the film. The biggest challenges they faced? The actors had to look almost exactly like the people they were portraying, and the makeup and prostheses had to be created in a very short amount of time, as they only had six weeks of pre-production. First, Hero, Baker, and their team spent months watching Fox News clips to get the best possible understanding of Kelly's look and style. Then, once the actors were cast, Hero did a 3D body scan and life cast. This helped him directly compare the physical features of the actors and the figures they were being transformed into. Then he made a mold of each life cast and created the skin-like prostheses based off of those molds. The prostheses were made with medical grade silicone and attached to the actors' faces with strong medical glue. These prostheses had to be applied to Theron every day, a process that usually took close to three hours. Theron did wear prosthetic pieces, but makeup products also helped alter the way her face looks. According to Baker, the two women have very differently shaped eyes. Getting the eyes right was essential in turning Theron into Kelly. Fake eyelashes were used to reshape Theron's eyes. Instead of using inflexible lash strips, Baker opted for Lashify Gossamers, which are fake eyelashes that come in pieces. While a normal lash strip would just sit on the lash line, these lash pieces could be placed with more freedom. Baker used the pieces to manipulate the weight of the lash line, which reshaped and resized Theron's eyes. Meanwhile, Theron also wore colored contact lenses because Kelly's eyes are a darker shade of blue. The eyes were topped off with prosthetic eyelid pieces. Since Theron has bigger eyes and what Hiro said were more open eyelids than Kelly, these pieces helped close that gap. The eyelids were the most difficult prostheses to create. During an initial makeup test, Theron had difficulty blinking while wearing them. According to Hero, this can happen if you apply too much glue, as the skin around the eyes is especially sensitive. Aside from the eyelids, the actress had to overcome several other obstacles posed by the prostheses. For example, these nose pieces, the biggest difference between Theron's and Kelly's noses were the nostrils and tips. A full nose prosthesis was not necessary though. Instead, Hero created nose plugs to widen the holes and a nose tip, which made Theron's nose more upturned, like Kelly's. To make the plugs, Hero actually took a cast of the inside of Theron's nose. He then scanned the cast, created the plugs in a program called ZBrush, and then 3D printed them. It took three to five attempts for the makeup team to get the plugs right. Why? Because if the plugs were too big, they could actually impact her voice. In the end, 40 pairs were printed for the duration of filming. Each plug had a handle on it, so Hiro could easily pull them in and out with tweezers. As you can see here, the nostril with the plug is wider than the one with no plug. Hiro did use more traditional prostheses to reshape certain parts of Theron's face. The makeup team found that Kelly had a more angular face than Theron, so they gave Theron a jaw piece that helped create this look. To further define the angular and square appearance, Theron also wore a fake chin. One final observation was that Theron had a much higher forehead than Kelly. You can't really create a prosthesis to make somebody's head lower, so he deferred to the hair department. Their decision? bring Theron's hairline down. Theron wore several wigs in the movie, 
including one with long hair and one with short hair. According to Morgan, lowering the hairline best helped give Theron a quote, heart-shaped face like Kelly's. But before Theron was fully camera ready, the team also had to apply beauty makeup on top of the prostheses. Now, this is never easy to do, but they also had to apply extra makeup to her to make her look like an anchor who is going on live television. Plus, beauty makeup doesn't easily stick to prostheses and is prone to come off. So Baker mixed the foundation with face mist and then airbrushed it on, which ensured that all the makeup stuck to the prostheses for long shoot days. It worked, and as you can see here, Theron was even able to apply some of her own makeup while getting ready. And for a few instances, when the makeup did start to fall apart on set, the film would later touch up the makeup digitally. That way, they wouldn't have to apply makeup all over again themselves. It was a handy way to save time and money on set. Yet, getting the makeup to stick isn't the only challenging part of acting with prostheses. There's a risk of them limiting an actor's performance, which could have happened to Theron if the makeup team had added even more pieces to her face. To avoid restricting the performances, Hero limited the use of prostheses whenever he could. Put all of these features together, the forehead, the hair, the chin, the tip of the nose, the nostrils, the eyelids, the eyes, and the makeup that went on top of it, and you have Megyn Kelly. So, in the end, just how realistic did it all turn out? Well, according to director Jay Roach, it looks so realistic that the film's lawyers made them add a disclaimer at the start of the movie, clarifying that any non-archival footage was actually an actor and not the person they were portraying.